All right, class, so today we're gonna be talking about streaming. I hope you guys did the reading last night on ELT, so that way it makes today's lesson a little bit easier. Hey, hey, is there anyone awake? Why are you guys not paying attention? Did you guys even do the reading last night? Yeah, I actually had a question about the reading. Um, what even is an ELT pipeline? I didn't really understand that because there is ELT and ETL and I didn't really know the difference. Like it didn't, it, I didn't understand it. Are there tools to make that easier? Or you know, like what do data engineers actually do with ELT or ETL and like, what's the difference? Oh, so you guys had questions about three. All right, all right. So scratch today's lesson. Today we're gonna be going over ELT then. So what is an ELT pipeline? First, we need to understand what ELT actually means before we get into the pipeline aspect. And I think if I visualize it for you, that would actually help a little bit more. So ELT is actually an acronym describing the steps needed in order to move data from a source to a destination. So here at the top, we have ELT. And the E stands for extract. And what we're doing in this step is extracting and reading raw data from a source system. So those source systems could be anything from an API or a database. The next step would be the L, which stands for load. In this step, we're loading data into a destination. And those destinations are going to be either databases, data warehouses, or data lakes. And lastly, the T, which stands for transform. So this includes tools like dbt to write SQL models on top of the data to repurpose all of the raw data we just sent to a destination to make it a little bit more flexible for different use cases. So this whole process is used typically for data integration into a database like Postgres or MySQL or a data warehouse like Snowflake. And lastly, for data lakes like S3 buckets. So now that we know what ELT stands for and what it is, let's Let's set up an ELT pipeline. But in order to do that, we're gonna need to do this with some examples. So for the extraction process, which is our first step, we're gonna need a source system. Let's say here we have an API on the front end that we want to pull data out of. In this case, let's say we have Salesforce. We wanna pull data out of Salesforce and move that into our data warehouse. In this case, we wanna use Snowflake on the destination side. Now here, we could definitely write a custom script to pull data out of Salesforce and move it into Snowflake. But over the years, the cost of compute and the cost of storage and all the different resources that you need have definitely seen a huge decrease in cost. And so naturally, that would make more sense to include an ELT tool in this pipeline. Not only for cost purposes, but we see this more for scaling reasons. It's a lot easier to have an ELT tool abstract away all the logic needed to pull data out and move data in rather than having your data teams create custom scripts for every single source and every single destination. That just becomes a big, big hassle and very expensive on time. And so economically, including an ELT tool here makes a lot more sense. So let's pull that in. On the right side here, we're going to add an Airbyte. And that way we're gonna have a Salesforce connector already set as well as a Snowflake connector on the other end. And that way all we have to do is plug in credentials and let Airbyte do its thing. And so now that we're extracting data, we wanna move it to its destination. And with Airbyte, like I mentioned, we're gonna set up a connector for our destination. And that destination is going to be Snowflake. And the pipeline doesn't stop here. Yes, this is already very simple, but we wanna add some transformations on top of this. So now potentially we could add dbt on top of Snowflake. So that way dbt can run its transformations in the destination itself and not before it's reached its destination, which brings us to our next point of what the difference is between ELT and ETL. When we saw our simple ELT pipeline, it might make more sense to draw out what an ETL pipeline is and then spec out the difference. So in an ETL pipeline, that might look like the same. So we'll have Salesforce on this end. And then on the right side, before we extract, we would then transform the data. So whatever scripts you would use, you would potentially run a script here to transform the data and then you would move that over to your destination being Snowflake. And so with ELT versus ETL, what the main difference is going to be is these two steps here being swapped. We transform the data before 
before it's moved to its destination. And so what is the benefit of ELT over ETL in this specific situation? So for the main benefit of ELT versus ETL, we noted that ELT, we are moving raw data over to the destination and then performing transformations at the end. Whereas ETL, we're transforming data and then loading it into a destination. So the main benefit of ELT over ETL is going to be that we have a lot more flexibility with our data, meaning that we're sending a whole payload of raw data over to our destination, we can transform that data and use it for different use cases. So if we have multiple different teams downstream, like a marketing team, a data and analysis team, or even our sales team that need this specific data, but present it in a different way, we can run different transformations for each of those different teams. So that way the data is catered towards them instead of having to run syncs every single time using the ETL pipeline, where we have to transform it three times, meaning we have to run a sync with our pipeline three different times. Whereas ELT, we just have to sync the data one time over and those transformations will already be done in the destination, meaning less compute for us and less time taken using the pipeline. So this has been a very high level explanation of what ELT, what an ELT pipeline is, what an ELT tool does, as well as a main difference between ELT and ETL and its big takeaways. We didn't go too in depth about ELT, but we may do a different video on it. Let us know down in the comments section below if you would like a video. If you want to read about it, we do have a blog post going over this into more detail. One of our very own Alex Marquette has done a very awesome blog post on this exact topic. So you can find the link to that in the description below. But aside from that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please let us know how we did that in the comments as mentioned before. But anyways, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.